Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video on quest number two. Uh, first you're going to write an equation that has the given slope and the given y-intercept. If you remember your slope-intercept form, then this is the slope, m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So we just have to plug them in. y equals negative 4 sevenths x minus 2. And that's it. Uh, so this person named Lucy pays in advance for her account in the athletic club. Each time she uses the club, is $5 is deducted. Um, write a linear function. Write a function that has a y and an x, so you can plug in x and find y. Uh, let's see, find the remaining value uh, after x visits. All right. Uh, if you're not sure how to write this function, you could try some specific values, um, such as 10 or smaller values. Uh, to help you build up to, like, how do I write this function with an x in it? Um, so if she starts with $211, right, you understand that, and you're, you're going to deduct $5 every time she goes to this athletic club, um, then after one use, she would be down $5. After two uses, she would be down $10. After 10 uses, we could go ahead and answer this question, well, she would be down... 5 times 10, right? 10 times she's gone, and every time they've taken $5 away, and so uh, this is how much she would have after 10 visits, okay? So notice we have here basically 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 10, 5 times however many visits she goes, and she's going to go for x visits, right? So 211 minus 5x equals y will give us a function. So then we can plug in the number of visits into visits and the number of uh, dollars left, right, the value in her account, is what we get out for y. So this was the function part, right, and the amount left was this, so 211 minus 50, 5 times 10, 161 dollars. So our function is y equals 211 minus 5x and the answer for how much money is left is $161. Here to solve this equation, remember that uh, to, to solve an equation is to get x by itself. Right? A 1 times x is what it, what it is. It's a 1 times an x. But we have 2 fifths times x, not 1 times x. So how do we get a 1 times x? We can multiply this fraction by its own reciprocal and we get 10 over 10 times x, and 10 over 10 is a 1. Right? So we'll do the same thing to both sides, as we always do. The 2 can cancel with the 30, give us a 15, and 15 times 5 is 75. Right? So 10 over 10 times x equals uh, 75. 1x equals 75. And 1 times x is just x. x is 75. Right? So we just multiplied by the reciprocal on both sides, which I'm sure you remember doing, uh, because it cancels right? the numerator and denominator become exactly the same and they cancel each other out. All right, next question. Solve this equation. Uh, we always like, when we see those parentheses, we like to just go ahead and distribute that thing that is being multiplied on the outside. So we'll go ahead and do that. Negative 2c. Negative 2 times negative 2c is positive 4c. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 equals negative 3. Combined like terms, we have 2c minus 16 equals negative 3. Now it just looks like a two-step equation where we would add 16 out of room here, so I'll bring it up here. 2c equals 13 divided by 2, and c equals 13 over 2. All right, same story here, only it's a little bit more work. We'll distribute the 6 to start with, uh, and I'll combine like terms on the left side. So 4x plus 2x is 6x plus 6. We have 5. 6 times negative 4x is negative 24x, and 6 times negative 21 is negative 126. And here we have some like terms, 5 and negative 126. So 6x plus 6 on the left side equals negative 24x. And 5 minus 126 is negative 121. And now we need to solve for x. I'm going to add 24x to both sides. Remember, that's the trick when you have variables on both sides. Cancel the variables on one of the sides and leaving only variables on the other side. So we'll have 30x plus 6 equals negative 121. We'll subtract 6. 30x equals negative 127.
divide by 30. And there you have it. x equals negative 127 over 30. Okay, graph this equation. Uh, so if you have gotten rusty on the y-intercept and the slope, then let me just remind you. The y-intercept and the slope is just what happens when we do the following. When we pick two easy values to plug in for x, that's really all that's happening. First, we'll choose for x to be 0, because it just couldn't get any easier than making x 0. Because this goes away, and y is negative 4. So we have 0, negative 4. 0, negative 4. Then, uh, what else are we going to plug in for x? We can plug in 1. A lot of people want to plug in 1, because anything times itself, or anything times 1 is just itself. But if we let x be 2, based on the denominator here, let's see what happens when we do that. We've got 3 halves times 2. Put a 2 over 1 if you want. y equals 3 times 2 is 6 over 2 minus 4. y equals 3 minus 4. And y equals negative 1. So 2, negative 1. Now I'm going to plot these two. Oh, yeah, I already plotted 0, negative 4. I'll plot 2, negative 1. And let me just remind you that what we did, you know, where this point is, is just over 2 and up 3 from the first point that we plotted. Over 2 and up 3. Those are supposed to look like arrows that I'm drawing there. Over 2 and up 3. Over 2, up 3. If one of those was negative, then uh, instead of going right, we go left. Or instead of going up, we go down. But there we are. We have uh, the two points marked out, and now we know where all the other points would be. They would be on this line. And really, I like to say that they wouldn't be on this line. They would be this line. All of the points that we could ever plot would just start to melt together and make this line. Okay, let me make sure I didn't skip one. That was six. All right, we're on to seven. Right hand equation of the line that passes through negative eight, eight is perpendicular. Okay, perpendicular means that they have opposite reciprocal slopes, opposite reciprocal slopes. This guy is a slope of negative 2 thirds. Okay, it's saying it's perpendicular to this line here. It has a slope of negative 2 thirds. Since it's perpendicular, then the slope of this line must be the opposite reciprocal. Opposite reciprocal, opposite meaning not negative, right? Or if this was positive, then this one would be negative. Uh, so it's a positive. Reciprocal means you flip the, the fraction over, so 3 halves. There you have it. There's the opposite recipro reciprocal slope. And we're looking to write this equation, y equals mx plus b. Looking to write that equation. And we have the slope. We don't have b. We need to know what b is. That's what this equation should look like. y equals number times x plus another number, right? The slope and the y-intercept, just like number 6. Rewind the video and look at number 6. It should look like that. So how will we find out what b is? Not only do we have the slope, we also have an x and a y. So we'll plug in all that stuff and find b, and then we can plug it in. So we have uh, y is 8 equals the slope of 3 halves times the x of negative 8 plus b. 8 equals, now this 2 cancels with this negative 8, becomes a negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus b. Add 12 to both sides. Uh, we have 20 is b. So now we know m and we know b. So we know that y equals 3 halves x plus 20. And we're going to write the equation that passes through this point and has this slope. Okay, This is like this past equation that we just did, except for instead of having to do detective work to figure out what the slope of this guy was, we're just told what the slope is. We're just told it's the slope is 4 fifths. So in the same way, we'll replace, right? This is y and this is x. So in y equals mx plus b, we'll say y is 4 equals the slope, which is 4 fifths, times x, which is negative 10, plus b, which we are about to figure out. Okay, 5 cancels with negative 10, gives us negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Plus b, add 8 to both sides. And you get b is 12. Now we know m, and now we know b. y equals 4 fifths x plus 12. Okay. Now, uh, I'll, I'll do that quick explanation again, but just really quickly, I'm going to let x be 0. 
uh, negative one fifth times zero plus three, that's three, and that's what y is. So we just plugged in zero and got three. And do that a lot of times and you'll start to notice that all that ever happens is you get this number for y whenever you plug in zero for x. So that's why we you know, keep referring to this number and saying that's our y-intercept. There it is, our y-intercept. And then we plug in a different value for x, a convenient value for x, 5. I know it's going to be convenient because watch what happens. Multiply by 5. That looks more like a 3. Multiply by 5. And we're going to get, right, I'll show you the long way, negative 1 fifth times 5 over 1 is going to be negative 5 over 5. 1 times 5, 5 times 1. 5 over 5. 5 over 5 is 1, so what we have here is a negative 1 plus 3 y equals 2. So we just plugged in 5 for x and got 2 for y. Okay, so notice when I plot this point, it's just 5 to the right of this point, 5 to the right, and 2 above where this guy was. Or excuse me. When I plot 5, 2, when I plot 5, 2, notice that it's just 5 to the right and 1 below where this line was, or this point was. 5 to the right and 1 below, we can just follow our slope that way. We can follow 5 over and down 1. Notice it's a negative slope, and so this line is going to go down and to the right, not up and to the right. Very festive looking line here. Throw a couple of arrows on there, and we've got ourselves a line. Okay, I'm going to write the equation for the line that passes through these two points Okay, uh, several times now. Uh, okay, by several, maybe I mean two. We have taken a point and the slope, a point and the slope, and we have written the equation of a line. Well, we have two points now, but we don't have the slope. But remember, we can find the slope by taking y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and we get uh, 5 over 2, so the slope is 5 halves. Now we have the slope, and we have our choice of either two points. I'm going to choose this one. The numbers are a little smaller, so it works out nicely a lot. So 1 is y equals 5 halves times 2, which is x, plus b, which we will figure out in just a second. 2 cancels with 2. We're left with 5 plus b on the side. Subtract 5, and b is equal to negative 4. So y is equal to 5 halves x minus 4. And on to the next one. Connie takes at least 48 seconds. So think about how fast you might re recite this poem. It could take her 48 seconds. Will it take her 49 seconds? It could. It takes at least 48. At least 48. Like, she cannot say it faster than 48. She's not going to be able to pull 47 seconds, okay? Maybe because she speaks that slowly, or maybe because it's uh, for a, a speech, and speech and debate competition, and you, know, you want to pace it out just right. So it takes her 48 seconds, uh, not 47, but it could be 49 because it's at least 48. So the number of seconds, the number of seconds, I suppose really I should be looking over here. Number of seconds, my S's look like fives so often. The number of seconds is, what relationship to 48? Is it less than 48? It's not less than 48. It, it has to be greater than, greater than 48, or 48 itself, or equal to 48. So S is greater than or equal to 48. Uh, show this on our graph, like, uh, like if this was 0, I guess this could be 12, 24, 36, 48, and 48, right? So when we get to 48 seconds, we know that that's how long it takes her to recite this poem, or it takes her more seconds than 48 to recite this poem. Right, the inequality is illustrated by the graph below. Okay, so it has this open circle, which means we know that it is not going to have a little equal to underneath it. And we can see all of the points over here, right? This point and this point and this point. Right? All of these guys, all of them, are numbers that are less than 3. So if we wanted to write an inequality, we could choose x and say that it's less than 3. It's not greater than 3, so we wouldn't write it over here. It's not equal to 3, so we don't have an equal to. It's strictly less than 3. We could write it this way. 3 is greater than x, which we could also read x is less than 3, depending on which way you read it. Either way. You could use a different letter. It doesn't say x specifically. It could be m or q or w. We're going to solve this inequality. Okay, Just like we would solve an equation, we would divide both sides by 10. 
and n is less than 11. Or sorry, <laughs> n is less than, say, 5.5. Okay, move that decimal back once. We get 5.5. So here is uh, 4, 5, 6. Here's a 5 and a half. 5.5. Open circle because it cannot be equal to 5.5, but it can be anything less than that. And not anything bigger, less. Uh, in order to collect a salary bonus, baseball player Tony Jones must get at least 280. I like to just put that in my head. 280, right? At least that much. So 280 is on the, the smaller side, right? 280 is the very smallest number of hits that, that uh, Tony has to get. So the number that he needs to get, right, could be greater, right? So the total number of hits needs to be greater than 280 or equal to 280. In the second to last week of the season, Tony started with 264 hits and got seven more. Okay, so in the second to last season, or second to last week, right? So here's the beginning of the week, here's the second to last week, here's the last week. And there's the end of the season. Back here, he started at 264. Okay, and he got uh, seven more. This is kind of a, a bad picture because it makes it look like this is where 264 is, but this really represents where the beginning of the week is. Okay, but he started at 264, and throughout the week, he you know he maybe got a hit here and one here and one here and one here and here, maybe a couple in the same games. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he got throughout the week somewhere. He got seven hits. Okay, so now here he is, beginning of the last week, right? He's right here, the beginning of the last week. Now he's up to uh, 271, 271 hits at the beginning of the last week. And now he wants to have 280 hits or more by the end of this week. Okay, so he's got to add on some more hits. So he's going to start at 271. He's going to add on some unknown number of hits. Uh, and that will give him the bonus that he's looking for. So whether it looks like 271 plus x or 264 plus 7 plus x, it's all the same. Okay. To solve this equation, or this inequality, we would subtract 271. And x would need to be greater than or equal to 9, at least 9. And that's what we would put here. That would be the solution. X is greater than or equal to 9. Am I, am I supposed to use a specific letter there? No, X is fine. Sometimes it says use a specific letter. OK, we're going to solve this inequality. Just like we were solving an equation, we would divide by the thing that's being multiplied by m. But now, the little trick with uh, inequalities comes in. Whenever you divide by a negative on both sides, you have to switch that sign around. That's my universal sign for flip that symbol around. Okay, And we get m is less than negative 3. And if we were to show that on the graph, here's negative 3. It can't be negative 3. So we put an open circle. But it could be anything less than that. And we graph it that way. OK, which problem could be solved by the inequality? Let's look at all these. Marty earned under $36 for two hours of work. Okay. So if C represents his pay, then two hours times C dollars per hour, uh, it says under, right? Under 36, under 36, less than 36. This comes out to be less than 36. And what do you know? Right there, choice A is exactly uh, appropriate for that inequality. But let's look at this one. The product of two and a number is equal. That's, that, that's going to be out right away because it's equal to, right? This is not equal to. Right, so that would be like 2c is equal to 36. That's not it. Uh, two students split a restaurant bill that came to $36. Okay, They split a restaurant bill. So the restaurant bill was 36. Right? And if uh, c represents how much either one of them paid, then I guess that could work. 2 times the amount that they paid each is equal to 36. Or 36 over 2 equals c might be the way that you look at it. But either way, it's equal to, right? They're not going to pay more than the bill. They're not going to pay less than the bill. They're splitting 36 exactly. And here, two equal priced shirts came to at least $36, right? Two times the cost of a shirt comes to at least 36, right? 36 or more than that. So it would be greater than or equal to 36. So that's out as well. We can see that first choice, A, 
is the one we want. Okay, so An earns $5.05 per hour working for the school. He needs at least 365, at least 365 for a stereo system, right, and solve an inequality. So 365, right? Is that like the maximum? You just like anything will do up to 365. No, it's gotta be 365 is gotta be like the smaller amount, right? The smallest amount that he could get is 365. Anything more than that, and uh, he's, he's golden, right? He's got extra spending money. Well, how do we calculate the amount that he makes? Take his pay, which is abysmal, abysmal uh, amount per hour, times the number of hours. Right, there we have it. 5.05 .05 is pay times x the hours should give him the total uh, that he earns, and that amount that he earns should be greater than or equal to 365. So we divide by 5.05. And x is greater than or equal to whatever that is. So 365 divided by 5.05, 72.28, okay? And with hours, we can be, we can be that precise, right? He can work for 72.28 hours, or maybe 72.3 hours. So if he works 72 and a half, he knows uh, that he's, he's got it. He doesn't have to work any more than that. We're gonna solve this inequality. We're gonna treat it just like an equation, but if we happen to divide or multiply both sides by a negative, we're gonna flip the sign around. That's the only thing we need to remember. So we have five x plus five is less than, we're gonna distribute that three. Three x plus six, I'll subtract three x from both sides, just like we would if we had uh, variables on both sides of an equation. We have two x plus five is less than six, subtract five from both sides. X is less than one, oh, sorry, two x is less than one. Divide by two and x is less than one half. Uh, let's say we make this zero. We can make this one and this two because it's not labeled at all. We can make the scale anything we want. Just needs to be less than one half and one half since I've done it this way is right on this tick mark. Can't be equal to one half so we'll just put an open circle there but it can be anything less than that. I'm gonna solve the inequality and graph the solution. It's a compound inequality, okay? so it's it's basically this inequality and this inequality all rolled into one. So when we solve it, we treat it like this is one side of an inequality and this is the other side. Okay? And this is one side of another inequality and this is the, the other side of that other inequality. And if we were to be solving, say, this inequality right here, we would add 11 to both sides. If we were to be solving this inequality, what would we do? We'd add 11 to both sides, right? So we add 11 to, quote, all three sides, right? But there aren't, it's not really three sides, it's two sides. But anyway, we're adding 11 to this guy here and that. Uh, so we get 12 is less than or equal to 3x. We cancel out the negative 11. Less than uh, 21. We would divide by 3 here here and here. We get four is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to seven. So we need to show that on the graph. So four and seven, here's maybe a zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? It can be four, it can be equal to four, it can be equal to seven, so we use closed circles. Okay, so it can be greater than four. It has to be less than seven. If I kept shading over here, it would be greater than four, but it wouldn't be less than seven. Right? If I kept shading this way, it would be less than seven, but it wouldn't be greater than four. So it's only in between. Right now we graph an inequality. The first part is we're gonna graph a line and then we're going to shade, right? Okay, well graphing that line looks just like it did in the previous examples that you just saw me do. Two examples where we graph a line. So I'm just gonna do it the fast way, okay? So point at negative one, that's our y-intercept. Slope of five fourths, we're gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, and over four, one, two, three, four. I'm about to draw a line. I wanna make sure that it should be solid or should be dotted. Which one should it be? It should be solid because points on the line make both sides of this inequality equal, and that's cool, right? Because that little equal to is right there. So we'll make a solid line. Now we want to figure out which side to shade. 
Okay, I'll do it uh, the test point way. I'm going to test this point zero, zero. Maybe that is from the shaded inside, and so I would shade this in. But if it's not, if it doesn't work, then I'll shade the other side. So I'll try zero, zero. Zero for y, zero for x. Zero for y. I know if I put zero for x, that's just going to go away. So zero less than negative one. No, zero is bigger than negative one. It's, it's further to the right than negative one is on the number line. So that's false. We, we must have picked a point from the wrong side. Right? It's not shaded in over here. It's shaded in over here. All of the points that work in the inequality come from down here. And I say down here because that's quite literally where those points are. They are down below this line, which you could also decide that you should shade below this line because y, the vertical thing, is supposed to be less than, right? less than. So all the points that are less than the points on the line are below. Since y is vertical, smaller, lower, less than numbers come from down below. We would shade down below. Here I have a y-intercept of 1, a slope of negative 5 halves. So we go uh, over 2 and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now this inequality doesn't have the equal to part, right? So points on the line, they make both sides equal, and that's not OK, because there's no equal to. So we do not include points on the line. So we'll make a dotted line. Okay, I could choose a test point, 0, 0. It's just barely below the line. I could test it out, 0 for y. 0 for x makes that term go away. Is 0 greater than 1? No, it's not. So it must not be this guy. Here, notice I'm shading above the line, which I could also determine was correct, because y is greater than, y is vertical. And vertically, the greater than numbers come from up above things. Okay. So you shade above the line. And that, I do believe, is it. Okay, so uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you again for watching. I'll talk to you later.